This is the Anycubic Castle uh, printer. And this is the same printer that I reviewed in the last video. Now, if you missed that video, go ahead and watch it right here at the title card, or you can just watch this video where we're gonna do some upgrades, starting with the bed. Now, this is a nice thick piece of glass, and it includes a, um, a bit of build tack uh, for the print service. Now, the build tack adheres wonderfully to your PLA plastics when you're printing with that material. But when you print with um, ABS or PETG, uh, what you're going to get is some curling of the parts. They're not going to stick as well. So the solution to that is to add a heated bed. So that's uh, the first upgrade we're going to do to this printer. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to address the, uh, the play here that we get out of the, the pulley system. Now these three pulleys ride in the grooves on these uh, 2020 aluminum extrusions and they're held together with a sort of spring-loaded piece of plastic, which I can do this to. Now that never seems to happen while it's printing, but you know, for peace of mind and just to have a really nice rock-solid printer, we're gonna upgrade that whole pulley system to a linear rail system, and it's gonna be great. So, yeah. Well, before we get into the upgrades themselves, I wanna just thank you guys, all of my loyal subscribers, who are still watching these videos. In the beginning, I was producing two videos a week and this channel was growing like crazy and it was really exciting and uh, I still have all of these great projects, some of which I've actually done, I just didn't make videos with them or about them. Um, but the thing is, I realized I could not adequately compensate myself for the time that I was spending on these videos. So instead, I now spend all of my time on my startup, which is actually gonna be launching on Indiegogo here in the next three weeks or so. But I still am making a video every two weeks, maybe every month. And because of that very sort of like decreased frequency of releases, YouTube's algorithm punishes me and it does not serve the videos to you. If you want to keep receiving my videos at this low volume, you're gonna have to hit that bell icon down below. Without further delay, let's get into uh, the upgrades on this printer. The first thing to know about putting a heated bed on an Anycubic Castle printer is don't get this one. Now, I bought this on eBay, and just like the listing says, it measures 170 millimeters across the heated area, which is acceptable because you hardly ever print uh, at the very edges of your bed. However, uh, the big problem with this uh, is that it has surface mounted components right here, and also these two um, soldering points, and so your bed will not sit flat against the, uh, you can see the gap there, and it's going to get even worse once you use the, the solder points. So uh, you will not get good heat transfer. Also, this uh, does not really fit on the frame. You can see that it's too small, uh, so it does not, it's not able to bolt to the rails. So we're going to have to find a different heated bed. And this is the replacement. So if we put the ruler on it, we see that the outside to outside on this PCB measures 220 millimeters. If uh, we measure the actual heated area, it is 200 millimeters. That's the white line here to the white line there. And that 200 millimeters corresponds perfectly to the glass bed that came with the printer. So together, these make a very nice assembly. The other thing we're gonna do is add this cork underlayment to the, uh, to the bed. Now that'll keep the bed uh, hot and it won't lose as much heat out the bottom. It also won't be radiating as much heat onto the main board, uh, which is a good thing. So we're gonna put that right there. We're gonna hold this like so and we're just gonna go. And what you can see is we have a perfectly sized piece of cork now. All I did to accomplish that was I traced the outside of this PCB and then uh, I used a large pair of scissors like this to just cut that cork and you can see how easy it cuts. Okay, other things we're gonna need for this uh, heated bed upgrade are a 100K thermistor and a power supply. Now this power supply cost me $15. It is a 12 volt, 15 amp power supply. The power supply that came with the printer is only six amps. So it is not powerful enough to drive both the heated bed and the heated nozzle. Um, so you'll need to upgrade that power supply. Also, we'll need a little length of um, 18 gauge wire. And that is just long enough to go from the board here up to the, pr up to the print bed 
uh, so it doesn't have to be very long. Now if you need to know uh, if a piece of your wire is the correct gauge, you can just put your calipers on it and that measures 1.2 millimeters on the copper itself. And you'll want to use stranded wire uh, for this. Okay, so I have my stack of um, cork, PCB, and glass bed, and that's going to mount right here on the frame, just like that. But I need to hold it securely in place there, and that means I need to 3D print some uh, brackets to hold it down. Now I went looking on the internet for um, some brackets that maybe somebody else had already designed, and I could not find any. So I'm going to draw up my own. And the, the, the first question then in doing that is where am I going to mount those brackets? And the obvious answer is right here, right along the rail where the original brackets that held the glass bed in place uh, were located. So the problem with doing that is it's going to sit proud of the outside of the frame here. So it's going to poke out and that will uh, make it difficult to enclose the frame uh, and have a heated enclosure and get uh, really nice quality prints with the heated enclosure. Well, I won't be able to make a heated enclosure if my bracketry is sitting uh, in the way of, of the walls. So what I want to do is mount the, uh, the bracketry to hold the bed down in these corners. So we're going to go into Rhino, which is uh, my CAD uh, program of choice, and we're going to draw up those brackets. Here we are looking at Rhino, and what I've done is used my calipers here to take some distance measurements on the printer itself. And then using those measurements, I was able to model the um, relevant facets of the printer. So we don't care about the frame or anything like that. Uh, we just care about this, which is a portion of the corner bracket on the uh, printer. Uh, these two uh, things here represent the, uh, the two halves of the belt. This brown portion is the cork underlayment with the PCB. And that is the glass bed. So with this modeled, we can now... Uh, model around it to make our um, actually holding bracketry right right there that's going to hold everything down. So I'm going to put this on to time-lapse mode and you can uh, just watch me draw these components.
we now have the uh, brackets all 3D printed and ready to be mounted. So those are gonna go right there like so. And what we're gonna do is commandeer these two holes, which are already sort of uh, existing on the corner brackets. But the problem is, um, all of the hardware on this machine is metric, understandably so. Uh, metric's just the better system. But this four millimeter bolt, you can see, slides right into the holes. Um, so you won't be able to like screw that in there and get it to fit. So the next size up on metric is uh, five millimeters. Well, to get a five mil millimeter bolt in there, we're gonna have to drill that hole out quite a bit larger and we're gonna lose a lot of this wall thickness. And because this is plastic, I really don't want to uh, sort of weaken that part so much. What I've done is a uh, little research and I figured out that these 1024 SAE standard bolts uh, are perfectly fitted for that. So all we need to do is tap that size of a hole, the four millimeter hole, and this will bite in there uh, just fine. So I've got a 1024 tap right here, and you can see I could tap the existing hole just by screwing that in there. But it doesn't quite go deep enough, so what we need to do is drill these holes a little bit deeper first, and then tap them, and then we will be able to mount those right there. So let's accomplish that task right now. By the way, this is a uh, 5 32nd inch drill bit, and it is almost exactly four millimeters uh, when you put the uh, calipers onto it. All six holes have now been uh, drilled and tapped, and you can see I've installed this first bracket. Now the way the bracket's designed to work is it has those uh, slots, so before you tighten down the screws entirely, you can slide it back and forth and get a nice tight hold on the PCB and the cork underlayment. Once that's in place, you can use this uh, long three millimeter screw uh, to hold the bed in place. So between the, all three corners being held down, the bed will be nice and secure. Um, there's two problems with this design. The first one is that it's not the easiest to uh, get in there and adjust that um, long screw. I have this fancy uh, Allen key with a ball end, so I can get in there on this angle and uh, make it happen, but it's, it's not ideal. And the other thing, the other problem, is we get this collision happening between the end effector and the part. You can see that happening right there. So the obvious solution there is drop the angle on that screw down a bit, but we're still gonna get a collision between the, uh, the vent here, the cowling uh, on the, the ducting for the um, part cooling fan. So this design has to change, and this is uh, obviously, the channel's called Design Prototype Test for a reason. You can't quite predict everything before you do it. So we made this design, didn't work, time to come up with a lower profile design. And we're just gonna do this. And like magic, the new design is built and installed. So taking a look at that, we're using this piece of metal uh, that is some 18 gauge sheet metal that I've cut using like a hacksaw and a Dremel tool. And then there is um, a hole drilled in it. And that hole takes this bolt, which uh, basically is sort of like a reverse um, teeter-totter design. So this end here, keeps that end raised, and then the bolt sucks it down, and then what you have here is the far end pinches the bed. Um, so yeah, this is quite low profile, and we shouldn't have any problems with it. It's worth noting something that I just figured out about this printer uh, while making this new design, and that is the belt collides with the end effector, and you still are not quite printing, uh, printing to the edge of the bed right there. So this 200 millimeter bed uh, is probably larger than the printer was originally designed for. The 170 millimeter bed um, is probably all you're gonna get as far as uh, colliding with the belt. Now you can certainly get to the edges of the print surface out here like that. Um, it's just, you know, eh, that's a drawback to this printer that I didn't notice in the last video. So uh, just something to think about. Okay, so what you guys cannot see is back behind here, behind the, the blue uh, power block here, there's a label right there that says 11 amps. And this one here says uh, bed heater. So 
into my 11 amp block, I have this uh, purple and orange wiring, and that is some 12 gauge wiring, which is a bit of overkill, but that's gonna be the power supply uh, feed. So actually 15 amps coming in from the power supply, but uh, you know, it'll only suck 11 amps because that's all the board is gonna draw. Um, here is the 18 gauge um, wire that goes to the bed heater, and it's going into this block. And back behind here, what you can't see is the labeling that says bed heater. So I think it just says heat bed. Um, and right there, I have um, the hole drilled in the cork, and that's attached, I don't know if you can see that, to the um, thermistor that goes right there in the slot, which is already in the PCB. So if I put all this down, it's gonna sit just like so. So let me uh, fight with that for a minute and get it all situated. Here we can see the PCB uh, bed heater securely installed with the cork underlayment, and that's not going anywhere. The blast bed is now in place. Also, secure, not going anywhere. Wow, <laughs> uh, you have to be a special kind of stubborn perfectionist to do what I just did. I just spent about an hour and a half removing these six T-nuts from the bottom portion of this frame. And the reason it took so long is because assembling this frame is just so fiddly uh, and time consuming. And in order to get these T-nuts out, it required that I disassemble almost the entire frame. So uh, these were the original hardware that was holding the glass print bed in place before we did the upgrade to the heated bed. Now that we did the upgrade, they were just gonna kinda sit there rattling around. And I could have um, put a bolt in them and just sort of like secured them in place so they didn't rattle, but uh, you know that wasn't good enough. And there was another purpose to doing it as well, and that is the original plan was to use this hardware to attach the linear rails to the 2020 uh, uprights. But there's a problem with that because this hardware is M4 and the holes that are drilled in the rails are M3. Now I certainly have enough M3 bolts to attach the rails, but what I don't have are T-nuts that are compatible with 2020 extrusion and are M3. So luckily I went on eBay just now and found a seller in the United States who uh, is selling that hardware. So I ordered them and they should be arriving in a couple of days. So. That's where we're gonna leave this video, and it's just because we can't get the parts on time. And I apologize, because we don't get the satisfaction of seeing a working printer at the end of this video. But uh, that will happen in part two, which I'm going to release here in a couple of days. So in that video, we're gonna do the obvious installation of the linear rails, but we're also gonna go over the, um, the firmware upgrades that you need to do to get that heated bed working. And also, more importantly, um, the firmware changes that you need to do so that your arms are the correct length in firmware. Um, and that way you'll have an easier time uh, leveling your bed because we all know how difficult it is to level the, the bed on these um, Delta printers. And just maybe, cross your fingers, I might be installing a um, auto mesh bed leveling system on this printer as well. We'll see how much of that firmware I can figure out between now and the next video. So stay tuned. Uh, You'll get the satisfaction here in just a few days. Uh, also, don't forget to hit that bell icon and subscribe. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.